in the previous videos, we discussed how music runs along a timeline. So we had our line, and then what we did is we said this line was, say, for example, a whole note long. And then what we did is we divided this line into units. So, in this case, we have four subdivisions of the line, and so each subdivision is a quarter note long. Or, if we had eight subdivisions, we would say that each subdivision is a quaver note long, and so forth. Now, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a bit of a spanning to the works of everything here. Because in music, although music runs along a timeline, just like I showed earlier, what happens is we have these lines going through music. If you look at an actual music score, you actually have a staff that runs like that. One, two, three, four, five. Just cut that off. And so you have a staff that looks like that, and then you have these bars that, that run through them. Now these lines are called, appropriately enough, bar lines. Now, what's important to understand at this point is that the bar lines that you see are not the same as the, the divisions of the line that I made earlier. Those divisions are still here, but they're imaginary. Um, we'll get back to that a little later. But um, first we're going to discuss bar lines. So, bar lines are a fairly new addition to music notation. Just to understand, music notation comes from about the 9th century, uh, the, the origins of it. Um, but bar lines only got added in about the 1600s, only really became standardized in about 1650 or so. Um, so that's very late in, in the development of the system. So it's just important to understand that they're, that they're an addition onto this timeline that we had before. So if we just go back to our line over here, and we add some bar lines onto that line, what these lines are telling us is that in between these lines there's a group of notes, let's do it like that, and that these notes are grouped together. And so music, the way we do that, or the way we indicate that, is we accentuate each first one of the group. So we go one, two, one, two, one, two. And that's what the bar lines tell us. They tell us that goes accentuated. And we need to get a pen. And that note is accentuated. And so forth. So it's a little bit different from what it looks like at first. So we usually indicate what kind of bars we have by using a time signature. Now, a time signature tells us two things. It tells us what, how many beats there are in the bar and what kind of beats they are. So in this case, there are two beats and they are crotchet beats. Now, just important to notice here, there's no line in the middle here. It's not two quarters but two crotchet beats. Um, so that's just an important thing to, to realize. Um, so we can have different variations of that. We can have two crotchet beats. We could have three crotchet beats. So then it would be like this, two, three. But when we're talking about beats, it's not just the notes. So this would also be the same. Or it could be like that. 
or even like that. So, one, two, three. One and two and three. And one, two, three. Or we could, of course, also use rests instead. So instead of this, we could just replace those notes with the equivalent rests, and it would stay the same. So this is why I mentioned earlier that the subdivisions of the line still stay there, but they're not notated explicitly. It's implied by the time signature. So, we could also do 4-4. Four, four. And sometimes this is written uh, as a C, which is sometimes referred to as common type. The, the, the symbol comes from somewhere else, but we often call this common type. So, 4-4, four, four, which would then just be 1, 2, 3, Four, or we could just write one note like that, or whatever the, the specific subdivision is. But the important point is it all adds up to four crotchet beats. So these basic time signatures are called simple time. Simple time. And for each one of them, there's a specific name. So, two is called duple, three is called triple, and four is called quadruple. So, duple time, triple time, quadruple. And each one is simple. So. Simple, quadruple, simple, duple, simple, triple. Now, life gets a little bit more complicated when we talk about compound time. So, compound time. Now, to understand compound time, let's just have a look at what's happening here in simple time again. So in simple time, we had, let's use two four for example, because that's easy. We had two beats, and each one of those beats subdivides into twos, or into fours. And so that's simple duple time. But what if we wanted to have a beat, what if we wanted to have a time signature where each beat split into three subdivisions. Now what we'd have to do is we'd have to use dotted notes as the beats instead. The problem with this is that now we can't use four as the bottom number because these things aren't crotchets anymore. And we can't use any other sort of number either. Because, because if we take a whole note and we divide it, it doesn't divide equally into three dotted crotchets. So there isn't a number that we could use at the bottom to correctly represent this situation. If we add those three together, what we would get is a dotted whole note plus a quaver because we would have a dotted, we would have a minimum over there plus another crotchet which is that dot over there and then we would have I'm sorry, we would have another crotchet with a dot so what we would have is we add this crotchet together with that crotchet we get another minimum. So, three of those things, three dotted crotchets, is equal to that. So it doesn't add up to a whole note, is the point. So there's no number that we can use to represent this. So this creates a little bit of a problem. 
So what we do instead is we make life simpler. When we have a bar that's made up of two beats of dotted crotches, there are six eighth notes, six quavers. And so we write it like that, six quavers. And now what's important to notice is that it's not six beats, it's two beats, one, two. But because we don't have a number to, to show what kind of beats they are, we use the subdivision. So six quavers gives us compound duple time. And so if we carry on the same process, if we have three beats, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Compound triple time. So one and a two and a three and a compound triple. And then of course, we can do the same thing. I'll write it up here. Now, let's make life a little bit more interesting. And let's say that our beats are now not dotted crotches, but dotted minims. So there's one beat. There's our second beat. Third beat. Fourth beat. And so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now we have twelve, but it's not twelve, eight, it's twelve, four. And so what's important to notice is that it's the top number that's telling us that it's compound time. Six is compound duple, 9 is compound triple, and 12 is compound quadruple. And then the bottom number tells us what each subdivision is, not the beat itself. So let's draw all this into a chart. So if we have simple time over here, and compound time over here, Then let's say we have duple, so that's two beats per bar, triple, which is three beats per bar, and quadruple, which is four beats per bar. Let me just make that pass. Quadruple. Then Let's say our beat is crotchets, then we'll go for two beats above, that's two, four, three is three, four, and four will be four, four, and for minims it will be two, two, three, two, four, two, and well, let's say quavers is the other one, so two, eight, three, eight, Four, eight. And so for compound time, uh, let's say our beat is dotted crotchets, the time signature will be six, eight, two beats per bar, nine, eight, three beats per bar, twelve, eight, four beats per bar. So it's dotted minutes, it'll be six, four, nine, four, nine, what were we, nine, four, and then dotted quavers will be six, sixteen, nine, sixteen, and, well, oh, sorry, that should be twelve, four, and twelve, sixteen. So, those are all the time signatures associated with those beats. And that is basically all that you need to know about time signatures, but there's one further thing. So we have 
the numbers 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, and 12 that we're using for our time signatures now. But there's some missing numbers. And they are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So these numbers, when we see them in a time signature, that's a different type of time signature. So this adds a little bit of complication on top of what we've had. These are called irregular time. Irregular. So even though it looks very complicated, it's actually not too bad. What we have is let's say we have a time signature like 5, 8. Now we've already seen if we have a time signature like 6, 8, what happens is we have two beats of three quavers each. Now in this case we've got five quavers, but obviously it can't be two and two or three and three and three. So what we have is we have either two and three or three and two. So this would go ba 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 ba. And sometimes this is written like this as well. So you have 2 plus 3, 8. So that just makes it perfectly clear. And then this one would be 3 plus 2, 8. Um, and so we can do the same thing if we have, say for example, 8, 8. That would be, for example, 3 plus 3 plus 2. But we could also do 2 plus 2, uh, 2 plus 3 plus 3, like that. Um, or any other combination. Uh, and it would be the same thing with 7, 8. Or if instead of using 8s, we said 4. So 5, 4 would just be like that. And now, of course, you don't have the stems to show you what the grouping is. So often it's helpful to have that. But usually in the music, there'll be some kind of something to indicate uh, how it's arranged. Or one could just make it up if it isn't. And that's irregular time signatures. And that is all you need to know about time signatures.